Hey friends, today I wanted to take you along as I make our family's favorite loaf bread recipe. It's very easy. And if you have a mixer, it pretty much does all the work for you. But you are more than welcome to knead this by hand. If you don't have a mixer, it'll still come out great. When I make this recipe, I usually start with about six cups of flour and then I will add more later on if I need it. I'm just gonna give this a quick mix mix the salt in the flour and I'm also going to make a mess on my table. Now I'm gonna add my yeast to my water. So I like to purchase these from Sam's Club. You get two of these big one, one pound containers. Um, when I buy them, I just literally, I just put them in the freezer. I'm sure there's some limit to how long this can be kept in the freezer before it goes bad, but I've been doing this for at least five years now and I've never had yeast go bad. Every time I use yeast, it's always active and ready to go. So maybe I'm lucky, but it seems to work pretty well. And this recipe also calls for about a quarter cup of sugar. Let's see if I can do this without, oops, without overstepping. I don't always make the best life decisions. Oh, this was one of those, those instances. So I'm just going to give this a mix. Now I'm just going to put this off to the side and let it sit while I get the rest of my ingredients ready. So I like to use coconut oil in this bread recipe. I feel like it gives the bread a really good texture and taste. Um, we also like to add butter in the recipe too but i use mostly coconut oil i think i think in this recipe i used three tablespoons of coconut oil and one tablespoon of butter just so you kind of get that little bit of butter flavor in the bread too but you could use you could use all butter you could use all coconut oil you could use um any kind of oil you want i suppose although um i would probably recommend a more neutral tasting oil i'm not sure what olive oil would be like in this recipe just in case you don't already know when you activate yeast in water, you want to be able to see some life. You want to be able to see, like here, you can see a little bit of bubbles forming. It, I mean, this has only been sitting for about a minute, but if you were to let this sit for a few minutes, you should really start seeing some more like foam almost on the top of your, on the surface of your water. So if you don't, then your yeast might be dead and it might be best to start over unless you feel like living on the edge and trying it out anyway. If I'm being honest, I don't ever wait for my yeast to activate because I've never had an issue with it before. Um, so I kind of trust the yeast and like the storage process of the yeast that I use. But yeah, you might wanna err on the side of caution unless you wanna live on the wild side like me. Okay, so now we are going to add our liquids into our flour mixture and we're gonna let it knead in the mixer for a few minutes. So full. Gosh, I'm so reckless. It's still looking a little sticky, so I'm gonna add a little more flour. At this point, I probably added about seven cups of flour. Okay, you can kind of see that it's starting to clean the edges of the bowl. They're not like super clean, but they might not come clean, and that's okay. Um, but we're looking for this to kind of all form a ball. You see it springing back? And this is exactly what we're looking for. We're looking for the dough to kind of spring back when you pull it or press on it. Okay guys, so at this point, I'm just gonna dump this out of the bowl. Just because I need the bowl cleaned out. And then I kind of just form it into a rough ball. And then I just take a little bit of oil and just pour it just a little bit, just a little bit down in the bottom of the bowl. And then I just kind of rub it all over the bowl as best as I can. And then I plop in my dough ball. And then I kind of just get it all in the oil. And then I flip it over and just 
Make sure that the ball's all covered in oil. It'll help it from drying out as it rises. So I cover mine up with a damp towel and then I will just put it in a draft free area to rise for about 45 minutes or so. Um, it kind of, it'll depend on how warm your kitchen is. If your kitchen is pretty warm, then it'll rise a little faster. Essentially what you're looking for is you want your dough to about double in size. Um, sometimes that'll take a little longer, sometimes a little less. So you kind of have to watch it, especially if your house is warm. I like to stick mine in my oven and sometimes I'll leave the light on if I want it to rise a little faster. So my dough has doubled in size, <laughs> maybe even a little more than doubled. So I'm just gonna punch it down. And I'm just gonna pull it out of the bowl and put it on my table. And then I'm just gonna split it in half. You could use a kitchen skill here if you wanted to, but these are just for our family, so I don't really, I don't need to be so precise. So then what I do is I just kind of take it like this, and then I just start shaping it how I want to shape it. So essentially what you're doing is just kind of pushing and rolling. You're pushing your fingers down and your heels, your palms of your hands down as you're rolling. Like that. And then you're going to have a pretty obvious seam. So I take the seam and I just lay it down in the pan. Like that. Like that. Now this loaf, I think I'm going to do a cinnamon swirl bread. And so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna make this about as wide as my pan is. You could use a rolling pin for this too. I'm just, I don't really care so much. <laughs> Sprinkle some cinnamon all over. And then a little bit of sugar. This is cinnamon sugar. And then I just start rolling in. And then where there's a seam, I kind of just like pinch it. And sometimes I'll do like a little pinch and twist kind of thing. I'm just trying to get it to stick to itself a little bit. And once I've got that, then I'll just stick it seam side down in my pan that seems easy. And there they are. I'm just gonna stick these in the oven to let rise. And don't forget to mist the tops of them with some water. So you want to keep the tops of your loaves kind of moist so that as they're rising, they don't get like a skin on them, which would really inhibit them from getting a nice good rise. I like to give my loaves one last spray before I bake them, and it'll really, I'm sorry about that, it'll really help them rise in the oven. And why not do a little cinnamon sugar on the top? I'm gonna start at 30 minutes. Sometimes I have to do like a couple more minutes. After the timer goes off, we'll tempt them and see where they're at. Well, our bread looks like it's ready, but let's temp it to see. You'll know your bread is done when it's reached 200 degrees in the center. All right, here's your bread. So you're gonna wanna take this out of the pan relatively soon after you pull it out of the oven. Otherwise, um, it's gonna kinda sweat around the edges in the pan and then your, your bread will get all mushy and gross. All right, let's cut into this and see how it came out. Mm. 
Hmm. Now we're gonna cut into the cinnamon loaf. Cinnamon swirl. Oof, that looks good. All right, friends, so that's our bread recipe. If you try it, let us know. I bless you. Until next time.